Hey guys, Flatpak Effects here, and in this video, we're going to be making this Vox title animation. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is right click, create a new composition. I'm going to call mine Vox title. I can set my dimensions and my frame rate, and I'm going to set the duration to be about five seconds in length. So the first thing we need to do is create our background and our text. So I'm just going to right click and create a new solid and I want to set my color to be this dark gray here and then hit OK. Then I'm going to take my chalk box layer. Now there'll be a download link to that file in the description below and I'm going to drag it on top here and then I'm going to bring up the opacity by hitting T on the keyboard and I'm going to drop this down to around 30%. Now just before we move on guys, I make weekly tips and tricks videos just like this one and if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out. You can also check out flatpackeffects.com where we have lots of free tutorials, After Effects templates and Premiere Pro templates. All proceeds go directly back into supporting this channel and the creation of future free tutorials. Now the next thing is I want to actually add my text in and position a box that sits behind it. So I'm just going to right click and create a new text layer here. Now I'm just going to call mine Vox title, but this can be whatever you like. And I'm going to come over to my character menu on the side. Now you can choose whatever font you like. And then I'm also going to shrink this down slightly so it sits in the middle of our screen. Now the next thing is we want to come up here and create a new box layer. Now I'm just going to set this to be a really dark color here. So maybe something around that. Then I'm going to draw a box which sits behind my text layer, something like this. Now I can always come back here and just readjust that color if need be. So I'm just gonna lighten this up very slightly. And then we should have something that looks like this. Now, the other thing I noticed in their animation was it actually had a glowing layer to the text and they also had a beam that came out from the bottom of that box layer. So what we're going to do is actually create another layer first. So I'm just gonna draw a beam that sort of runs up the bottom here on a new shape layer to something like that. And actually with that box layer selected, what I'm actually going to do is make it very slightly lighter and I'm going to drop this layer so it sits behind our box layer. And then you can just reposition whatever needs to be adjusted there. So the next part is we actually want to take that layer and add a bit of a glow to it. So with our text layer selected here, I'm going to change the color to be this blue color here. You can enter that number in if you want to get that exact same color. And then I'm also going to come up to effect, down to stylize, and I want to add the glow effect. Now I'm going to just mess around with these settings here. And I'm also going to change this to be on top. So that's going to add a little bit of glow to that text layer. Now the other thing we can add to our text is we want to animate it in so it's got a bit of a block dissolve. So an easy way to do that is actually select that layer, come up to window and make sure the effects and presets panel is open. And I'm just simply going to search for the dissolve the dissolve digital and drag that on the start of my clip here. And you'll see that it actually messes up the glow layer. So what we need to do is actually reorder this by dragging that glow layer underneath those layers and that won't add that effect to that glow layer. Now you can see when we play through, we have that effect playing out as intended. Now the last part of this is we actually want to animate those lines shooting out the side of our text. So what we're actually going to do is create one layer and then we're going to duplicate that and mirror it on both sides. So what we're going to do here is actually create a whole new shape layer. And I'm just simply going to start by drawing out a long box, something like that that sits over my layer. Then I'm going to take that layer and I'm simply just going to duplicate it and I'm going to move it slightly back now I'm holding shift at the same time so it stays in line. And with that new layer selected, I'm simply just going to come up here and change the color. Then I'm going to take that layer again and I'm going to duplicate it. Move it back a little bit more. And I'm trying to randomize the actual distance in between these layers. And I'm simply going to give this one a blue layer. Then I'm going to duplicate that layer again and move it across maybe down to a black here. And you can see what we're doing. We're just basically layering those over the top of each other and we're sliding them back. 
So now that I have one sequence created, what I can actually do is take my bottom layer again, and I'm just going to duplicate that and bring it up to the top and then bring this across like so. Now this time I'm gonna drag the blue one above And I'm going to drag three up this time and just keep randomizing that layer. So we're basically creating a sequence of different colors all layered on top of each other. So once you've got your layers in a position that you're happy with, what we're actually going to do is select all of those layers. We're going to come up to layer and down to pre-compose. And I'm just going to call this line group one. So now we have a single group of all those stacked layers. So next what we're going to do is actually drag this down so it sits behind our shape layers. And we're just going to line this up so it lines up with the top of that box there. And I'm going to drag this across. So it starts roughly in this position here. Then I'm going to hit P on the keyboard and create a position keyframe. And I'm going to go across to the end of my composition. And I'm simply just going to drag this across while holding shift on the keyboard to something about there. Now, if we play through this, you'll actually see that animation playing out. It's just a simple movement animation. Now the speed won't actually matter because we're actually going to create a duplicate of this and change the speed for each of those layers. So the next thing I want to do is take that group and I'm just gonna come up to edit and down to duplicate. And I'm going to hit P on the keyboard to bring up all those position properties. And I want to click on the word position. That's going to highlight both of those position properties. And if I hold shift on the keyboard, I can actually just move this down so it lines up with that layer underneath. Then I'm going to also hold shift and slightly off center this. Now, if we play through this, you can see that we now have two off centered layers that are moving at the same speed and I actually want them to move at a different speed. So what I'm going to do is actually go to my end keyframe here, and I'm going to drag this one back. So that's going to actually slow that movement down on that layer. And if we play through this, you can actually see that we now have both those layers moving at different speeds. Now this is where difference in speed is actually going to make the effect really stand out. Now we're really going to see this when we create another layer. So we're actually going to take both of those layers and I'm going to come up to edit and down to duplicate for both those layers and just drag them on top. And again, I'm going to hit P to bring up all those position properties. I'm holding shift on the keyboard to select both of those. And I'm going to drag these straight down like so. Then I'm just going to off center these. With that top one selected, I'm actually just going to off center this again. And now if I play through, you can see we have a lot more randomization in the speed. Now I'm just going to further randomize this by taking one of those layers and just offsetting it. And then I'm just going to create one last layer by duplicating one of those layers, selecting all those keyframes and just dragging it down to the bottom here so it lines up with the bottom of my layer and then just further off centering it. And now if we play through, you can see all of those layers moving out the left hand side of that image. But what we actually want to do is duplicate that for the right hand side. So the way we do this is we select all of those layers and we're going to come up to layer and down to pre-compose. I'm going to call mine group one and I only want group one to appear on the left hand side. So with my group one selected, I'm going to come up to the rectangle tool and just draw a mask that sits over the left hand side. So it's only going to appear on the left hand side of our image. Then what I'm simply going to do is take that layer, just come up to edit and down to duplicate. And then I'm going to come over to my rotation tool and just hold shift on my keyboard and rotate this 180 degrees to the other side. Then I can just reposition this so that it lines up nicely. And if we play through this, you can actually see our finished effect. So there you go, guys. That's how you create this effect. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can check out more videos just like this one over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.